Hello, John Serrato here, coming to you from the Parsonage of the First Baptist Church in Manchester, New Hampshire. And uh, our church is sort of on hold, and we're uh, sending out these messages uh, on a regular basis, sort of a daily devotion. And we also have some other outreaches through uh, this medium which God has given us, our Sunday morning service, a couple Bible studies, so I uh, hope you can uh, connect with us. I'm trusting that the Word of God to you will be a blessing and a help today. We're in Romans chapter uh, four, uh, chapter 12, and um, in, in that chapter, uh, the Apostle Paul challenges us with a, with a, a sort of a practical um, uh, a, a practical, a set of, of thoughts that, that he has put together uh, for uh, sort of following up on all the doctrinal teaching that he's been doing. He's been doing all this doctrinal teaching, and he was last few chapters he's talked about the history of Israel and the future history uh, of Israel and so forth. And uh, so uh, we're, we're, we're uh, looking at chapter 12 of, of Romans where uh, we've been in this chapter for a few few days now, and, but there's so much in it. Uh, but, we, but he starts off in the first verse of the 12th chapter uh, saying, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. And of course, we said that therefore, we always, whenever there's a therefore, you ask what it's there for. And, and, and always it refers back to what he just got done saying, in this case, <laughs> 11 chapters. And uh, he, so he's, he's saying, therefore, in the light of all this that I've been telling you, especially just just before this, where he talks about the great power and blessing and wisdom and knowledge of God and how he used Israel, even when Israel was disobedient all through the Old Testament, he used them and and how he used them to pre pre prepare the way for Christ, the Messiah, for him to come in Jesus to be one of us. And uh, then he goes on to talk about how when even when Israel rejected Christ as a nation, when they rejected him the leadership, uh, God used that to provide uh, the potential for eternal salvation for all humankind, any who would come and believe on him. All humankind won't be saved, unfortunately, tragically, but, but anyone, whosoever will, may. And, and so Jesus has provided that, and, and, the, and the way it happened, the mechanics of it were that Israel as a nation rejected him. Uh, and, and that wasn't God's best will for them. He, he sent Jesus to be accepted. John the Baptist was like Elijah preparing the way of the Lord, and, and hopefully, you know, I mean, Israel had every opportunity to accept their Messiah, Jesus, but for some reason they rejected, and he knew they were going to do it, so he worked it out so that even when they arrested him, gave him to the Romans, put him on the cross, on that cross, God brought about man's redemption by allowing Jesus, and it was not just Jesus out there doing it, it was God was in Christ on the cross. God himself was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. That's the heart of the gospel. That's the, 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 the good news. That's so, God so loved the world. And, and uh, so, um, he who knew no sin was made our sin in order that we might be made the righteousness of God in him and have eternal life. Not our righteousness, but his credited, imputed righteousness to us for believing. Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him for righteousness. And that was not written for Abraham alone, but for anyone who would believe that they may be justified by faith. That's the beautiful message. So that's the beginning of it. So God knew all that was going to happen, and in his infinite wisdom, he provided salvation for whoever, whosoever will. Now, so Paul says, in the light of that, I, in the light of God's great love for us and what he did for us, historically, as a fact of history, what he has done, Paul said, on the basis of that, I beseech you, I plead with you, that you present your bodies, which means your total selves, present your body, a living sacrifice, 
a living sacrifice. No more dead sacrifices, no more lambs, goats, bulls, birds, whatever. And, uh, that's all fulfilled in the Lamb of God, Christ, once and for all. Hebrews, book, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, if you want to get this straight, just read the book of Hebrews over and over. It points out that Christ died once for all and fulfilled all the prophecies of the Old Testament and all the demands of the law. In one stroke on the cross, he he took care of everything, and uh, and and it doesn't have to be done over and over. So we have a one-time finished work sacrifice, and now we are to continually give ourselves as a living sacrifice, and it, it's so it's so beautiful. Paul uh, Paul beseeches us to present ourselves uh, a living sacrifice in in the book of 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 Hebrews. Uh, the, the Hebrew writer ends up his his uh, letter, uh, which he wrote to to the Jewish people who had come to Christ, uh, and and now were under persecution and were tempted to go back to Judaism, and and, and so without without minimizing the beauty and importance and power of the Old Testament and Judaism, he shows, however, that that was preparatory. All that was preparatory for the coming of Christ, and Christ fulfills and completes all of the Old Testament prophecies and, and all the uh, conditions that, that God laid down for people. And, and he says, so uh, uh, Paul, uh, Paul says, on the, in the light of this, uh, we should present ourselves as, as a living sacrifice. And in the Old Testament, a sacrifice was um, uh, was considered uh, an ultimate final giving it up. In other words, it was destroyed, and it was devoted to destruction. It's a, it's a very negative. It sounds very harsh, but 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 sin has terrible consequences, and the sacrificial system showed that sin costs life. It kills. It destroys. It was a picture of, of, you know, the wages of sin is death. And God used the whole sacrificial system to show that, that, that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. In other words, people, uh, the sin has to be paid for. And, of course, Jesus paid once and for all, the Hebrew writer says, on the cross. And uh, so, uh, now... The, the sacrifice that we present is not an animal, and we don't need to present Jesus. He's already presented himself to the Father for us. He wants us now to present ourselves to him and, and devoted to him totally. Give up the flesh, the world, the devil, the evil, all those things. Be willing to turn away from those and let him make us pure and good and righteous and holy and give us power to obey the law of God and be obedient. That is what he aims at, and that is possible, and it is accomplished in many, many, many believers. Uh, progressively, you know, fits and starts, failures along the way, but there's always that. If you're truly born of God, you will become more and more like Jesus you'll become better and better, gooder and gooder, if I can use that. So, And here's what he says about it. The Hebrew writer says he ends up his whole epistle, this whole 13 chapters, he ends up by saying, therefore, like Paul, therefore, you know, always, what's the therefore, therefore? Well, therefore, in the light of all that Jesus did for us, all that God did, his great love for us, his, his free salvation and forgiveness. Therefore, we're living sacrifices. And he says this, Therefore, by him, through Jesus, let us continually offer the sacrifice, sacrifice, living sacrifice. We offer the sacrifice, not animals, not, not even money, not things, not even time. All that is different. All that We don't do any of that except course we give our time and we give our energy but the old testament sacrifices are fulfilled so he says continually offer the sacrifice of what of praise to god to praise to god that is 
the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. The fruit of our lips. So what is this sacrifice that we are to give to the Lord? It's praise and thanksgiving and gratitude. And if that's real, we will give ourselves totally to him. It'll show us that that's the best thing for us to totally surrender to the Lord Jesus. That's something Christians have to do continuously. Give their hearts to the Lord. That's the he give living sacrifice. And you do it in a positive way. It's offering him praise and thanksgiving continually. That's so important. We need that as an offset to all the misery and all the evil and all the stuff that's not only around us, but rises up in us from our flesh from time to time. So praising God, get offering the sacrifice of praise, not animals, not this, not that, the other, but that's ultimately worship. You know, um, uh, one of the greatest theolo theologians uh, that I, I think, one of the greatest, he, he wasn't perfect, no theologian's perfect, every theologian's got his you know, things that we don't all agree with. But, uh, but uh, Karl Barth, a great, great uh, theologian, he was a total liberal until World War II broke out, uh, World War I broke out, and he heard the guns, and he said, oh, my goodness, uh, it's not going to be uh, the way the liberals believe. Everything's going to get better and better and better, he realized. And he went to the Book of Romans, and he read it, and he got really born again. And and and, he, and and even though some of his theology is a little weird, but but he was brilliant, and he said the greatest thing that a human being can do, the greatest thing is to worship God. Christian worship is the greatest thing a human being can can perform. Christian worship. There's nothing better than than worshiping the living God because that's right. He is worthy to be worshipped. Nothing else is worthy to be worshipped. We worship our superstars. We worship our celebrities, our movie stars, our entertainers. It's sick, sick. We, we, you say, oh, we don't pray to them. No, but we treat them like they're the greatest, best thing. We imitate them. We want to be like them. That's all, that's all death. That's spiritual death. That's idolatry. That's exactly what it is. Christians don't need any of that. Doesn't mean we don't like music. Doesn't mean we don't like sports. It just means we, it, it, it doesn't become a god to us. It's just secondary stuff. Take it or leave it. But but worshiping the Lord, worshiping God, that should be the, the thing we love to do. And you've got to develop that because the flesh fights against that. Because your right place before God is to worship Him. He is worthy of infinite praise and worship and goodness. He's the source of all beauty and goodness and power and life itself, and he upholds our lives. We, we just, he deserves our worship and our praise. And when we do that, it does something for us. It frees us from the other stuff. It, it lifts us above all the vanities of the world and so forth. So that's our spiritual worship. And that's what Paul said, present yourself a living sacrifice and, 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 and the sacrifice of praise to God continually, the fruit of our lips giving thanks in his name. In the Old Testament, the, uh, the, uh, the Christian, not Jew, the Christians, the Jews in the Old Testament, when they came and offered a sacrifice, it was the fruit of their labors. They would offer wheat and things that they grew and, and, and parts of their harvest, or they would offer animals, and, and it, was, it was like the fruit of their labors. So the fruit of our, the fruit God wants from us is praise and worship and thanksgiving. Why? Because we owe him everything. And, and, and it's not that he needs it, it's we need it. It, it, because it puts us in a right relationship with him. He's God. He's the creator of God. And so, so it, w w the sacrifice of praise to God, giving thanks in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So in Romans chapter 12, he says, present yourself a living sacrifice to him. And then he says, it's your reasonable service or your spiritual worship. And, and what, what that means is, that 
that it's only rational in the light of God, who he is, what he's done for us, and so forth. It's only sensible that we surrender our hearts and lives to him and uh, give ourselves to him. So then he says, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, except one of God's reasonable service. And then he says this, and I'd like to get into this a little bit today. Be not conformed to this world, this world system. He's not talking about the world of nature at all. He's not talking about the world of nature. He's not talking about the beauty of, of the creation. He, he's talking about the world system that man has developed without God. And that's what's going on. That's why the world's in the shape it's in. Because, because man has, has come to, by nature, he just thinks he can do it without God. You know, we just heard a, a governor uh, of New York a while back said, God didn't do this. Things started to get better in New York with the COVID thing. Things started getting better. And he said, God didn't do this. He said, he said, it didn't come from up there. He said, man did this. We did this. See, that's, that's typical of the world view. That, that man has the capacity to do anything. In fact, some scientists used to believe that, that in a, it was just a matter of time until we understood everything. <laughs> And, you know, it's interesting, a, a, a couple, almost a couple hundred years ago, a hundred and some years ago, when science really began to develop, what, it was actually stated by some scientists, well, uh, one, one, one person said, well, we can close the patent office because everything that's ever going to be invented has been invented. You know, I mean, <laughs> that's amazing. And some said science is going to take care of everything. See, and all this is, is a... Is, a, is an oblique way of saying we don't need God. We can do it. We have reason. We have this power to think. And, and you know, I'll tell you what, man has incredible power. God has given us incredible power. There are people whose intellect blows your mind, blows my mind. When I see the, 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 the when you just look at what man has done, the technology, uh, the scientific discoveries, the, the, the use of those discoveries to produce the world we live in, the communications, uh, all this stuff. That, it's amazing. Think about the computer. I mean, it's crazy uh, how, how, how tremendous it is, how, how powerful and awesome it is. It's true. A man has done all that. But listen, there's two words. God has allowed it, he's allowed it, and he's enabled us. God, and I thank him constantly for allowing and enabling man to produce the product, to, the, to produce the progress that he's produced on this world. Now, unfortunately, man in general doesn't acknowledge that. But as Christians, we can see and, and the Bible says it so clearly, and, and it's a mystery to the world to can't believe this, that a man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. You have nothing you haven't received. That means IQ, that means intellect, that means ability to think, that means ability to create, develop, and all these incredible things that man can do, every bit of it is a gift from God. And one of the greatest proofs is that man lived thousands and thousands of years before he even began to do all this stuff. What happened? Well, to me it's clear. God just simply opened up the uh, keys of nature and showed man what uh, he can allow him to do. Okay, I've got a lot more to talk about with this next time. We'll continue. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the, the world you've given us. Even though it's abused, misused, worshipped, Lord, we thank you that we can 
just be blessed by all the good things you allowed and in, uh, enabled man to do. But yet, Lord, help us to look beyond all of that to your goodness and mercy and how you would like to bless all that for the good of man. We just pray for the day when Jesus returns to take over all these things and make them good and beautiful and helpful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.